The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, If two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I'm curious, and I'm not asking for a show of hands, but have any of you ever written a letter to the bishop regarding a grievance you have with a priest or a deacon? Did you do so before speaking privately with the person who offended you? Did you take your concern to your pastor before taking it to the bishop? In today's gospel reading, Jesus gives us great advice for dealing with people who offend us, who we believe have sinned against us. The process begins with speaking privately with the person regarding the offense. In my experience, this first step is often omitted, and we begin either with step number two or even step number three. When we are offended by someone, we tend to speak with friends who are like-minded before we speak with the person who has offended us. We may even gossip about someone who doesn't do things the way we believe they should be done. Quite likely, the person doesn't even know he's offended us, although many others are well aware of our indignation. If we do decide to confront the person regarding this offense, we may choose to skip right to step number two. We do so in the presence of others, those who have the same opinion as we do. Rather than sitting down privately with the offender, we confront him or her in the presence of those we know will back us up. This way, we really don't have to listen to what the person has to say about the so-called offense. We can simply accuse him with the support of our friends. We just want to get whatever it is off our chest, rather than seeking meaningful dialogue about the issue. In my experience, Most of the conflict we experience in church community is the result of this rather selfish mindset. The idea that I am right and you are wrong. The idea that if you don't agree with the way I see things, then you are sinning against me. You are not respecting me. In fact, most times, The offender is not sinning against anyone. He or she is simply not doing things the way I think they should be done. And if he doesn't come around to thinking like me when he is confronted by me, if he is even confronted by me, 
we tend to get even more angry and closed-minded about the matter. We decide to continue to gossip about the so-called offender, and we may even air our grievances in a letter to the bishop. I think one of the lessons Jesus is trying to teach us today is that the world doesn't revolve around us, that we are not the center of the universe. The Christian life is not about us as individuals, but about us living as a loving member of a larger community. Of course, when we live in community, there will be things others do that upset or offend us. It's inevitable. This doesn't necessarily mean that those things are sinful. It doesn't mean that the offender is wrong and we are right. It often means that we simply share a different point of view about something. If we are offended by another member of the community, Jesus tells us to take our concern to the person directly, privately. This is the best way to have a meaningful dialogue about the issue. We may be able to change the person's mind if we do, or we might have our mind changed if we truly listen to his or her point of view. By following step number one in Jesus' formula for reconciliation, we just might find that we save ourselves a great deal of angst and avoid the sins of gossip and perhaps even calumny. We may discover that it is we who must change our mind rather than being so determined to call out the offense of the other. God bless you.